Today's episode is brought to you by the Daily Gardener Friday Newsletter. You can sign up for the newsletter over at thedailygardener.org. Hi there, and welcome to The Daily Gardener, a podcast about garden history and literature. I'm Jennifer E. Blaine, and today is February 21st. Today in garden history, we remember Hieronymus Bach, the German botanist, physician, and Lutheran minister. He died on this day in 1554. Regarded as one of the fathers of modern botany, Hieronymus tended the gardens of Count Ludwig for nearly a decade. And he also was one of the first true field botanists, and he searched for plants throughout the German Empire. Hieronymus coined the term Riesling. It was a type of wine that he listed in his herbal. And his surname, as was the surname of many scientists of his time, was translated into Latin, and it became Tragus. And so he was honored by the grass genus Tragus and the spurge genus Tragia, both named for Hieronymus Bach. And today we celebrate the birthday of John Henry Newman. The English theologian, scholar, and poet was born on this day, February 21st in 1801. His words are in the introduction to Abraham Linwood Urban's book, My Garden of Dreams. John wrote, The garden, a place of spiritual repose, stillness, peace, refreshment, delight. And today is also the birthday of Lady Joan Margaret Leigh, the English botanist and the youngest daughter of the sixth Earl of Dartmouth. She was born on this day in 1885. Lady Joan's story ends in the Himalayas, and her death can be linked to a 1931 expedition of three English mountaineers who got lost in the Himalayas and stumbled on a valley of incredible beauty. Blooms of exotic wildflowers made it seem like they were in a fairyland. One of the climbers was a botanist named Frank Smythe, and in his book, Comet Conquered, he called the area the Valley of Flowers. The Valley of Flowers is a seven-day trip from Delhi. It is now a protected national park, and as the name implies, it is a lush area that's famous for the millions of alpine flowers that cover the hills and slopes and nestle along the icy flowing streams. Along with daisies, poppies, and marigolds, there are primulas and orchids growing wild. And the rare blue poppy, commonly known as the Himalayan queen, is the most coveted plant in the valley. The Valley of Flowers remains hidden through most of the year, buried under several feet of snow through a seven- to eight-month-long winter. But in March, the melting snow and monsoon activate a new growing season. The spring season opens a brief three- to four-month window when the Valley of Flowers is accessible to humans, generally during the months of July, August, and September. Lady Joan traveled to the Valley of Flowers as a direct result of Frank Smythe's book. Smythe's work inspired many, and it attracted the attention of Edinburgh's Royal Botanic Garden and they decided to sponsor Lady Joan's trip. Although some of her friends were against her going to India, Lady Joan was eager to go. She was 54 years old and unmarried, and she likely needed a break from her regular duties of caring for her father, the poor, and herself. She had just gotten over a bout of pneumonia. And so in 1939, Lady Joan arrived in the Himalayas, accompanied by guides and porters, and as she made her way over the lower foothills, she collected alpine specimens. On the day that she died, Lady Joan slipped on the slopes of Kulia Garva, 
after she fell, her porters recovered her body. They buried her in the valley at the request of her older sister, Dorothy, and then all of Lady Joan's belongings were packed up and sent home to England. The following summer, in 1940, Dorothy visited her sister's grave, and she placed a marker over the spot where she had been buried. Today, tourists still visit Lady Joan's grave, and it includes these poignant words from Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. It's time to grow that garden library with today's book, Sir Joseph Dalton Hooker by Ray Desmond. This book came out in 2007, and the subtitle is Traveler and Plant Collector. Joseph Dalton Hooker is remembered as a Victorian British botanist, explorer, president of the Royal Society, and director of the Royal Botanic Gardens Q. When he died at 94, he'd accomplished a great deal indeed. He'd established a network of botanic gardens around the world to facilitate discovery and classification, which enhanced the world's economy and promoted trade. In 1877, Joseph Dalton Hooker was knighted for scientific services to the British Empire, and he was awarded the Linnaean Medal in 1888. As Charles Darwin's closest friend, Joseph learned of Darwin's theory of evolution long before it was made public, and Joseph was instrumental in getting Darwin's work published. As for Joseph, he himself traveled the world in search of new plants. He nearly drowned in the Antarctic Ocean during his first major expedition on Sir James Clark Ross's epic voyage to Antarctica between the years 1839 and 1843. And during a trip to the Himalayas, Joseph was imprisoned by the Raja of Sikkim. But he was eventually released and he was able to explore the Himalayas. And here is what he said after seeing the noble rhubarb in bloom. It is the most wonderful looking plant in the whole of the Himalayas. Well, before we wrap this up, here are a few fun facts about Joseph Dalton Hooker. His wife was named Hyacinth, and a few years ago, Kew Gardens shared that during his travels, Joseph Dalton Hooker would address letters to his young son this way. He would write, My dear little lion, or my dear cub. Joseph Dalton Hooker, a fascinating man of botany, and you can read about him for yourself by getting a copy of Sir Joseph Dalton Hooker by Ray Desmond, and support the show using the Amazon link in today's show notes for around $16. Great book. Finally, we end the show today with a little botanic spark provided by Anna East Nin, who was born on this day, February 21st in 1903. Anna East Nin was a French-Cuban-American author, and for over 20 years, she led two different lives. She was married to two men simultaneously, and every six weeks, she would travel between New York to be with her first husband and L.A. to be with her second husband. In 1977, she died of cervical cancer in Los Angeles. And her unabridged diaries that spanned 63 years were published posthumously. Anna East once wrote these words, And the day came when the risk to remain tight in the bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. Well, that's it for today's show. 
Just remember that you have a standing invitation to join the free Facebook group for listeners of the show. The next time you're over at Facebook, just search for Daily Gardener Community, where you'd search for a friend and then request to join. And if you'd like more of The Daily Gardener, you can subscribe to the newsletter over at thedailygardener.org. And don't forget that you can also show your support for the show by using the Buy Me a Coffee link over at the website or in today's show notes. This is Jennifer Ebling. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day.